Hello everybody, I apologize for being away for a little while here, but I've got a bunch of videos coming out here fairly soon. Today's project, I found a pair of Johnston & Murphy. I know you may not really be able to see the logo there, but Johnston & Murphy, this is the Optima line. Cap to Oxfords, in pretty nice shape. And uh, I thrifted these for actually it was $6.50. And we're gonna get them cleaned up. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. Okay, if I take a look at these, uh, look at look at these shoes. Um, hopefully you can see there, it's kind of rubbed off, it's hard to see. They are. This one will be a little bit easier to see. Johnston and Murphy's. And uh, these are um, what's I believe called the Optima line, which is their lower level line of the actual leather sole Goodyear welted shoes. And these are a few years old because you can see there it says made in USA. So these are good ones. As of I think about 2020 or so, none of Johnston and Murphy's shoes are made in the USA anymore. Um, so I'm just guessing these are probably about 10 years old or something like that. For a while, what they had was their upper level line, the Aristocraft line, uh, which I think retailed for like 280 bucks, was the only line made in the US. These were all made, I think, in India. Um, so, so this is a pretty really solid shoe. It's corrected grain leather. What that means is uh, it's a little cheaper leather that is coated with like a plastic. You can see there's no pores in it. So it's not as high quality leather, but again, made in USA, better stuff. Advantage to corrected grain leather is it is more stain and water resistant. So sole wear is actually really light, very, very light. And the heels are very lightly worn. So these are gonna be, you know, these are gonna be pretty easy to, uh, you know, to clean up and everything. So um, I don't think I even really need to take the laces out. So, so if I'm gonna follow my full shoe cleanup procedure, Here's what I would follow. Uh, first of all, remove, and I'm gonna skip some of these steps and I'll tell you why if I do. Uh, but the full procedure would be number one, to remove the laces. Number two, spray the interior with a 70-30 alcohol water mix to disinfect. Number three, insert tight fitting shoe trees. Number four, wipe off the shoes. Number five, clean the uppers with saddle soap. Number six, perform any spot repairs on the leather. Number seven, polish with cream polish and brush. Number eight, mirror shine the stow caps mirror shine the toe caps number nine stain or recolor the sole edges number 10 polish edges of the heels and then number 11 reinstall the shoe trees so for these i'm going to leave the laces in number one just because these are in such nice shape it just doesn't really you know i just don't need to do that okay and um so like in this case i'm gonna skip removing the laces it just doesn't need it you know they're just in really nice shape so let's go straight to uh, this is an alcohol water, 70% isopropyl alcohol water mix. I just put in a straight spray bottle. A couple three squirts per shoe. And I don't know why sometimes it's doing this. I would not wipe it out. Don't breathe the fumes. Don't wipe that out because you don't want to wipe out. I've never had a problem with it, but you don't want to like wipe out any inking or anything like that. And it's okay to put the shoe trees in while they are damp. I actually prefer that in a way. Uh, these are adjustable and need to be adjusted down a little bit. That's not tight enough. Um, I want, I like it when they're a little bit damp because this might be too much tension. But anyway, when they're damp, um, that's not tight enough. When they're damp, they're going to help stretch the leather out. better already doesn't it now tight fitting shoe trees let's just wipe them off and everybody has their own way of doing things this is just a damp cotton cloth but, you know it's an old t-shirt and this is the way i prefer not wet but damp right let's uh, try and get any dirt and stuff off of them very basic And I'm gonna even skip the saddle soap. This is corrected grain leather. 
because this is corrected grain leather. There's no real dirt in the leather. I, I, it just doesn't need it to me. Um, and the saddle soap can change the acidity, the pH of the leather, so not needed. I'm just going to skip it. They're too nice. Um, these things definitely could use some moisturizing. Shoes always can use some moisturizing. So this is pure polish. Love this stuff. Andy Vaughn. This stuff is made in Bend, Oregon. Um, I'll link a video below. Uh, I've got an in-depth interview series with him. But this is cleaner conditioner. Notice cleaner conditioner. Ingredients of this stuff. If you can see. Uh, orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. Isn't that interesting? Orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. Right? Orange oil is like the solvent. And coconut oil is the conditioner. Uh, and so is beeswax. So with fingertip. The, the nice stuff about this over something like this is the uh, pure polish stuff has stuff in it that's much better for your skin it's all non-toxic cleaner conditioning cleaning is is one thing conditioning is something else so if you use like your finger and you apply this stuff with your finger it's going to act more as a conditioner the oil is going to go into the leather more if you use a uh, cloth that's a little more absorbent it's going to act more as a cleaner why because you're going to use the oil and you're going to pull stuff off of the surface so for example here, in this case, I'm gonna use more of the cleaning properties. Um, I want some conditioning as well. So this is a nice, I got this from uh, Andy at Pure Polish. It's a nice, like thick absorbent cloth. Okay. I'm generally start with the left shoe. Load it up a little bit there. This is gonna put some conditioning into the leather for sure. But like I said, this is also gonna help clean the surface if there is anything on there that needs to come off. into the welt a little bit there and I generally don't clean and condition the toe cap heavily a couple reasons number one I don't think I've ever seen a shoe have the leather crack on the toe cap okay uh, but the main reason is I don't want the toe cap leather greasy because it could inhibit the mirror show and by the way I'm gonna try and get here this piping around here it's a, I think, an important area to help condition because it, leather on these old shoes can crack in that area, especially around the heel. So, like I said, just a little bit on the toe cap doesn't need much. Doesn't need nearly as much as the rest. It's already looking better, isn't it? Now both shoes have been conditioned, and the next step for here is that I, I don't see any spot repairs necessary. So um, I am just gonna go ahead and brush them both off. I think this helps, you know, get the excess conditioner off as well as drive it into the leather. Look at that, huh? It's not bad already. See, some of the scuffs are diminishing. And next I'm gonna go to polish. Let me do the other shoe first. For polish, I'm just going to go straight to the black paste wax. There is cream polish, but this is paste wax. It should be fine, especially the condition of these shoes. And uh, this stuff, as far as the ingredients in it, orange oil, carnauba wax, beeswax, coconut oil, earth pigment. How cool is that? And I could just, uh, and I think I will just, I can just go ahead and apply this with my fingers. And you'll see the consistency. Um, Andy Vaughn says this in his uh, leather talk interview with me. He says his products are not necessarily ideal for a beginner. And I think the reason for that is because of the all natural ingredients. Um, like if you've watched my saddle soap video, you know, it's interesting when you read on their website, all the stuff like PEG 100 and, you know, there's all these chemicals I put in a lot of these products um, to stabilize them and make them, you know, more user friendly. It's like when you go get natural food, you know, if you go get whole natural foods, vegetables and stuff like that, they uh, often will um, go bad faster you know, because they're natural. Well, the consistency of this stuff isn't as consistent as like a, you know, some of the other polishes and pastes. And it's not a downside to me. So to me, like for example, you put your finger on it and it takes a second for it to liquefy because what's happening is your heat from your fingers is helping to basically liquefy, I think it is the coconut oil, so. I swear by pure polish this stuff now. And like I said, you know, you look at some of the ingredients and, you know, some of this kind of stuff, the sapphire. I mean, sapphire is great stuff, you know, but you look at some of the ingredients, you know, I'd rather not be touching pine turpentine. 
you know, versus food grade coconut oil. And he says he also chose coconut oil because of the stability of the coconut oil. In other words, helping to, you know, have that oil not go rancid. Let me let that set up. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do the toe cap. And after I do this shoe, I'll let it set up while I do the other shoe off camera. Get that set up. next but I'm going to put another layer of this black to help fill some of these scratches on the toe cap set up a little bit do the other one this is a mirror mirror polishing cloth also from pure polish t-shirt does work but I think these finer weave tight tight cotton weave cloths do help a little bit water and I think this wax I uh, put it on a little bit too thick and now it needs to set up it's pretty humid and hot today in here yeah do you see how that's all there that looks terrible I'm gonna just have to let that dry let it set up and try and come back to it more water too set up a little bit and I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to switch to the Pure Polish High Shine Paste Wax. This is a mirror shining wax um, and uh, this would be akin to the Mirror Gloss uh, Medaille Dior Mirror Gloss from Saphir. By the way, uh, this is um, almost half the price of this. Looks like it's half the size, right? Nope. This is dished out. This is 75 milliliters. This is, believe it or not, 60 milliliters. Okay, very interesting. So much more cost effective and better for you. Water. 
sometimes I have found corrected grain leather to be much easier to mirror shine. Sometimes I found it much harder. Sometimes on Allen Edmonds, old Allen Edmonds shoes, I found it much harder because it just seems like the wax won't build up on it. Sometimes I've, like in this case, it seems like it's easier. It's kind of weird. Because sometimes the full grain leather takes longer because the full grain leather has all these pores in it and you got to fill over all the pores where this is smoother texture. Already getting a pretty doggone decent shine out of this. This is a lot of water. Again, I think because it's a little warmer in here. More humid. Oh, look at that. We're just in a few minutes, huh? We're not done yet, but man, that's... You could stop right there and, you know, call it a day. I mean, most crowds have the shiniest shoes in the room. Let's see, right here, that spot, it's still pushing some wax around that's not cured. I'll probably just have to let these sit, harden up a little bit before I add another layer. You see there, right in this area, there's like no shine at all. See, look at all these fingerprints. The wax is still tacky. Try adding just a touch. Touch. You can vary the amount of pressure you're using. I'm pushing really hard now, and that seems to be helping. I'm adding more water and pushing hard. And that's what it needed. No, I'm pushing very lightly to buff that surface. More water, more pressure. Okay. Think. looking pretty good. I'm going to let this sit and uh, harden up a little bit before I put any more on. So I polished up the right shoe toe cap and I did one more coat on the left. And look at that. That's not bad, huh? Next, I'm going to get the edges of the uh, heels and soles. Black is really easy. Um, this is Simple Shine, and this is just edge dressing. This is a just basically a black dye. It's got a little check valve in it. So when you use this stuff, you got to kind of like push once, seeing that loads of the sponge. That dry a little bit, and then I'll come back and wax them. And to get that off of the heel there, I'm just gonna use some brake cleaner. Actually, Saphir Reno Matte works, but I'm out of Reno Matte. Oops, that was way too much. That blasted on everything.
For the edge of the heels, I'm just going to use the sapphire. Uh, this is uh, actually the mirror gloss. You see it's all cracked. It's breaking up here, so I'm just going to grab a piece. It's kind of drying out a little bit. And, and then you see it's kind of, I'm coating it here, but it's not even. Just, just, just wait. Just kind of loading up that edge of the heel now with that. And then I'll smear it around here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and get to, try to get the edges of the soles as well. Again, I'm not getting it perfectly, but I'm going to smear that around. Well, I did that. Let me see. Now I get a nice, I should get a nice coating. I'm going to let this set up while I do the other shoe. Look at that, huh? Now we're looking like something. Now there's one other thing that sometimes I do, but I'm very careful with the way I do this. So this is just some neutral cream polish. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the soles. Now here's where I think this would be misleading, where you could be, in my books, unethical with this, is if I were to try to shine up the part that's worn to make it look unworn. That to me is unethical. You know, if you're, you know, gonna sell the shoes or something like that. I mean, if they're your shoes, do whatever you want, if you're, you know what I mean? But uh, I don't ever wanna be deceptive, okay? But this part here that's not walked on, this will make it look a little nicer. And I'm gonna go up here. Like I said, wherever it's not really walked on. I'll go a little bit up in here. And I think that's... I think that's good. I'm going to let that set up. And I'll hit it with the... Uh, horsehair brush in a minute. See? Doesn't that look nice? A little better? Okay, here they are, all finished up. Not too shabby, huh? And this is not like an ultimate mirror shine, you know, but that's about as far as I want to go. I'm starting to reach a point of diminishing returns. It gets a lot, and if these aren't, the, the shinier the mirror shine, the harder it is to keep it up, you know? And this is what I want to look like. I want it to look really nice, nicer than average, but not crazy high shine. very presentable right and i have a pair this exact pair of shoe in my size upstairs um johnston and murphy you know these corrected green with the leather soles and if you're a fan of my channel you may know that i'm a big fan of rubber protective half soles but i purposely keep the johnston and murphy's like this with a leather sole this is your perfect funeral interview formal formal business meeting shoe and i am leaving them weave laced the way they came not changing the bar lacing just because a it's okay 
and B, because usually when they've been that way, they've been weave lace and you switch them, you see imprinting from the laces and I don't want that to show. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching. If you've ever shined a friend or coworker shoe against their will, just because it bothered you that much, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. All right, thank you very much. God bless.